How many of you, you, you woke up one day, and when you woke up, there was a song going on inside? Does it happen to you? Yes. It's a sign of spiritual health. If, if it has stopped happening to you, if for the whole one month it didn't, it didn't happen once, you are, in, you are in a state of spiritual coma. You are on life support. You are surviving by the last strand of the mercy of God. Satan can pass through the room and take your head. That's what I mean. Your human spirit is the tarmac, is the runway. If God lands, he will land on your human spirit. But what would differentiate the men from the boys is that when he lands, the boys cannot discern that God has landed. So if you want to exercise your spirit, you need to create the atmosphere of heaven. You create the atmosphere of heaven. That's number one. Because worship can only be achieved in spirit. That's when worship is worship in reality. You can be doing something and claiming you are singing. It doesn't amount to worship. If it's not driven from your spirit. Maybe it's a good song you heard in the shop and you came and started singing it. The song will take us to that shop. But if the song comes from your spirit... It will take us to where his source is. Are you there? Are you there? Then, when you create the atmosphere of heaven, then you will exercise your spirit. That's why God gave us the capacity to speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, what you are doing is that you are stirring up the oppression of Christ. There's a spiritual administration that is built up in your spirit man. And when you exercise your spirit in tongues, you stir up that administration. So if there are things that God wants to make available to you because you have stirred up the oppression of Christ, that administration can guarantee that those things will come to you. Are you there? That's the source of spiritual knowledge. It, it derives from the spirit of God that resides in your human spirit. Are you there? I say, are you there? When you give your life to Christ, it is your spirit that became saved. The reason why your spirit was the organ that became saved is because the Holy Spirit found legitimacy through the work of Jesus Christ to dwell in your human spirit. Your human spirit is like an accommodation, like a flat. And it's the Holy Ghost that is dwelling there. But the thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Ghost can dwell in your spirit and sleep off. And be inactive just like jesus was in a boat he was sleeping and the fishermen were trying to stop the storm they were trying in the flesh not knowing that divinity was in the boat so jesus can sleep in your life the way he's left in the boat but if you begin to pray in the spirit what you are doing is that you are you want to wake him up did you get that you want to wake him up if you want to profit from the Holy Ghost, you must be taught how to speak in tongues longer than you intend to speak. That's where we came up with the technology of 10 hours prayer. So that you can exercise your spirit longer than... Because at home, if you start for one hour, a voice will tell you that there is yogurt in the fridge. There is yogurt in the fridge. It is strawberry. There is yogurt, strawberry, yogurt in the fridge, strawberry. After one hour, 30 minutes, you will find yourself, you are drunk, a bottle so you can't push there until you are you push in the congregation and you do it in the congregation then you can now begin to practice on your own the reason for what we do in the congregation is so that you can develop experience that you trust that if you did it in the congregation you can do it on your own that's how it works because if we leave you on your own you will not do it are you there now when you are praying in tongues and you want to receive the word of the Lord, you want to receive spiritual knowledge, you want to receive insight from the Holy Ghost, there's a way you set your heart. Are you there? Forget about your trouble, your problems, your crisis, your challenge. Set your heart on Jesus. Can you do that? It's hard. 
So even if your heart runs away and runs to the central business district where you lost money, your ATM card, before you came here, your heart goes there, bring it back and set. It's when you want to set your heart that you will discover that your, the vanity in your heart is much. And the way to weaken the, the strength, the voice of vanity is to pray in tongues for long. That voice will. Can we try it? You forgot about your neighbor? It's practical. What we are doing now is practical. Forget about your neighbor. Set your heart on the Lord Jesus and let us speak in tongues. If we do it for 10 minutes, this atmosphere will change. Because God is excited when men acknowledge that they are insufficient and they tune to him. Oh, he's excited. He's excited. I know you are the boss of your company. So when you come, everybody's running. So you are used to being boss. So now I'm teaching you how to be helpless. Because prayer is the cry of the helpless. It's the dialect of the helpless. You cannot see yourself in that situation where you are vulnerable. And that's the reason why you have not been able to explore the pathways of the spirit. Can you hook your heart up there? Look into Jesus and then you exercise your spirit in tongues. Can we do that for five minutes? Can you look on him as we speak in tongues? For five minutes. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your wife. Yeah. <laughs> as you begin to speak in tongues, what happens to you is that you begin to gain ascendancy in the spirit. You begin to ascend in the spirit. You begin to ascend. You ascend. You ascend in the spirit. You ascend. The Bible says you will mount up with wings. You will mount up with wings like the eagles. You will go beyond the serpent. You will go beyond the scorpion. You begin to glide in the Holy Ghost. You begin to mount up. You begin to mount up in the spirit. As you ascend before God. You ascend before the, the Holy Ghost. He begins to give you a wind. A wind, a power, an ability with which to ascend in the spirit. Put that heart on Jesus. Focus it on him. Focus it on him. Focus it on him. Abakatai takuza mandelia iskopo kope baboko sabalate isko presko faliso sana tua a presko pende kede koko dia isko manakila tali aha oh God preso meni agai kope isko babuna tua esko pese le kabeni mansonde li kabranda baboko sabalaita. Rabba Baba Boko Sebina. Thank you, Lord. Sinelo Aiko Fulamu Paulasi Zamonde Gebobo Sakwa Iko Babokos Lambrokotama Palata Kesko Bede Lado Desko Dinanante Kosketa Boko Bababua. Brisa, Brisa, Latosa, Lagamata Teco Babuda, Aibra Masondo Bokoko, Bababo Salata. So will I cope more. A fool's every mekete, Coco Babo Basico, Brabena Sante, Lasso Soso Boko Tolia, Egomande Cura Bambos Elecadeli, Lama. <laughs> oh, in the name of Jesus. Listen, you know we are still in class. The lecture is still on. It's just that we are in the practical session. So if you can, if I say in the name of Jesus, keep quiet and listen to me. Now, when you begin to gain ascendancy, the Holy Spirit started taking over. The congregation now and the more he takes over the more conscious of him you become 
and the less conscious of yourself you become. You are being brought into, you know, you say, worship the Father in spirit and reality. You are being brought into the context called reality. The place where all things begin is in that context of reality. If you stay there long enough, you begin to hear God. Because it's natural. Though. The power gifts. You know power? Power. Power flies on the wings of spiritual knowledge. If you can access spiritual knowledge, you can access power. Now, while we prayed, I accessed spiritual knowledge that there was a padlock that has locked some families. And members of those families are present here. Right? So, if it is true that what I picked is, true, is valid, I will now ask God, can you confirm it? So, power now goes to confirm the spiritual knowledge that I received. Is it too hard? Is it confusing? Okay. You want to go preach for a crusade? Wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. Switch your phone off. Bring your Bible. Put it on your bed. Bring a jotter. Put it there. Bring a pen. Put it there. And begin to speak in tongues. Create the atmosphere like this. Speaking tongues, speaking tongues. You get tired, go and sleep. Wake up again. Do what? Speaking tongues. You get tired, lie, lie on the bed, sleep for 30 minutes, you wake up again. You are migrating. Then you come to a point where spiritual knowledge will come to you. Don't ask me how it feels like. If you get there, you will hear. Write it down. That an asthmatic patient is coming to the crusade ground. In any case, if he reveals, it means he wants to heal the asthmatic patient. Okay, yes, there's someone that we come and the person is deaf on the left ear. You know, I told you that power flows on the wings of what? Spiritual knowledge. Then you now act. You finish preaching, then you act a drama. The drama of what you know what God wants to do. He wants to heal asthma and he wants to heal deafness. So you arrest the spirit of deafness, you break the yoke of asthma. You will see that day people will be healed. Because power responds to spiritual knowledge. It is your inability to secure spiritual knowledge that makes you powerless. Now these families can be loose. Because I know that God wants to deliver these families. It's not me. It's not me. So I am now coming to insist that God will do his will. Huh? So I touch her. <laughs> then power will begin to come on her. The, are you sure I did anything? I did not do anything. All I did was that I labored to go where God speaks. And if he has spoken, his word will not return to him for it. So the preacher does nothing. The preacher only goes to where things happen. The place called reality. Because he worships in spirit and he worships in the context of reality. Oh, you might bring a dragon from the forest. You will be amazed what will happen here. Once I can hear a warlock, a sangoma, the one that is 100 years old, he will bow in this place. I'm not telling you what I've not seen. Are you there? I've been a missionary for a long time. So I've fought with witches. Today, witches need to be afraid of me, not me afraid of witches. If they hear my name, they say that one is too wicked. As long as you can hear, then there will be power. So, can you stretch your hand in the direction of these individuals? Because right now, 
as you stretch your hand, God will stretch your hand into their families. Oh, listen, there's still somebody in the congregation that is supposed to be here, and the person is the hand of God will touch that person. The hand of God, Father, anywhere, locate that individual. I came to train you so that you can be a spiritual man. You can deal with the witches of your community. The days of big men of God are over. Now, the body of Christ must be equipped to have capacity so that everyone can take care of their own domain. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break this padlock. 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 We break it. We break it. Let the one that bound you come under intense judgment. Let the padlock that has kept you limited even though you are full of potential let it break from off you in the name of jesus hallelujah indeed apostle Aramio Sai is a gift to our generation what a powerful teaching i get blessed by all of his teachings but get more blessed by his practical teachings such as this which shows one how to do it this kind of teaching is rare and not common whereas they are actually needed for the growth of a believer into maturity. Every one of us in the kingdom of God is a potential mighty instrument in the hand of God, but many of us don't know how to properly function in our kingly and priestly roles, which is the main reason for our inability to put God's power on display. This message is all-encompassing. It teaches one how to get answers to your prayer quickly, the reason why you must pray in tongues and for long, how to operate in the power of God, how to secure the word of God and knowing one's right as a true son of the kingdom. This is not a message to joke with and I will admonish you to listen to it over and over again because I believe you can't comprehend all that was taught by listening to it once. Now, as my usual practice is, let me quickly highlight statement that I found profound while listening to this message and I believe it will bless a lot of people. Apostle Arame Sayo noted that Waking up with a spiritual song or a song in your heart is a sign of a good spiritual health. The moment one receives the life of Christ, what happens is that God makes the human spirit his habitation. Once you start growing into maturity, you'll be able to differentiate and discern his witnesses in your heart. How does one grow into maturity? It is by exercising your spirit in prayers, studying the word, meditating on God's wonders, and living for God alone. When you begin to enter your spirit through speaking in tongues, what will be happening to you at the moment is that you will be stirring up the operation of Christ in your spirit man. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4 confirms that one who speaks in an unknown tongues edifies himself and Jude 120 reveals that one can build himself up on his most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. A saved man is a man that the Spirit of God is joining in his human spirit. Therefore, if you want to profit from the Holy Spirit, you must learn how to speak in tongues for a long time, even more than you intended. It might not be easy, especially if you are not open to the practice in your local church. This is one of the reasons why you shouldn't neglect the assemblies of brethren, because once you learn to assert your spirit among brethren in the congregation, then it instills confidence and belief in you that you can do it alone. Whenever you are praying, and you need an answer, insight, or spiritual knowledge from the Holy Spirit, what you need to do is to set your heart on the Lord, forgetting your troubles, challenges, or problems, and keep praying in anticipation of hearing from the Holy Spirit. The heart is noisy, and you might not know how noisy it is until you need to tarry in the presence of God and receive word from Him. But the way to weaken the strength of the voice of vanity is to pray in tongues for long. God is always excited whenever men acknowledge that they are insufficient and helpless in themselves. Prayer is the cry and dialect of the helpless. It is a show of vulnerability to God. Once you begin to pray, you begin to gain ascendance in the spirit, which is mounting up with wings like that of eagles. 
power above any power of the world. The more you pray, the more conscious of him you become and the less conscious of yourself. Power flies on the wings of spiritual knowledge and anyone who can access spiritual knowledge can channel God's power. When you receive spiritual knowledge, you say it and leave it for God to confirm it. Power confirms spiritual knowledge. It flows on the wings of spiritual knowledge and as long as you can hear the voice of God, then there will be power. Never live a powerless life. Embrace holy living and continually exercise your spirit, which will bring profit to the kingdom of God. A man that lives powerless will be a victim of powers. Thank you for listening to my commentary and try to share this video with fellow believers because it will bless them greatly. Please also like and drop a comment on this video to help this video to reach more souls that might be in need of this video. I remain your friend and brother, Olawale Hayomidi Ogundobi, the hard one of the Red Light Channel. Remain blessed. Amen.